So how many of you guys were raised in a Christian home? OK, a majority of you. Um, that's definitely a blessing. I was not raised in a Christian home. Um, growing up, my parents never went to church. Uh, they never took us to church, um, except you know on the big holidays like Easter and Christmas. Um, so for the most part, that was not a priority in my life. Um, when I was 12 years old, they divorced, and um, so I never really had like a father figure in my life. And um, you know, if you have a dad in your life, be very thankful for that. Um, you know, tell him how much he means to you every day, and um, just appreciate having a family that's together. Because in the world now, you don't really see a lot of that. Um, but that's that's how it should be. Um, so when I was about 15 years old. Um, you know, I was in high school at the time, and I started hanging out with the wrong types of people. And um, they got me involved in a lot of different things that um, weren't good, um, one of those things being drugs. And um, I just want to encourage you guys, please, 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 be careful who your friends are. Pick them wisely. And I know even in Christian schools like this, um, the devil attacks you. Um, and it's so important to have godly friends who are going to encourage you in the Lord and um, there's one of the principles in RU that says, those who don't love the Lord won't help you serve the Lord. And that's such a true, um, that's a truth that I, the Lord has taught me through the RU program. So I just want to encourage you guys to have the right types of friends. And it's going to make you a better person in the end. So when I started hanging out with these people, I started um, doing drugs at a young age. Um, I actually became addicted to a lot of different things. Um, by the time I was 20, um, my life was completely ruined. It was a matter of five short years. But the devil just took everything from me that he could. And um, I'm thankful that the Lord had mercy on me. And I'm thankful that um, you know, he allowed me to go through those things, because I wouldn't be who I am today if that wouldn't have happened. Um, at 20 years old, I, uh, I was club promoting in downtown Houston. And uh, one night, I, um, I overdosed on drugs accidentally. And, you know, you don't just wake up one morning and plan to die. The Bible says our life is but a vapor. And you never know when your last day is. You never know how long you have on this earth. And um, I overdosed, and um, the, the person I was with took me to the hospital. And um, upon arrival, I was pronounced dead. Um, I didn't have a heartbeat, I wasn't breathing, I was blue. Um, the doctors actually had to resuscitate me back to life, and I'm just so thankful that the Lord gave me a second chance, because I didn't deserve that. Um, I wasn't saved at the time, and that's really scary to think about, because if I wouldn't have came back to life, I would be in hell today, and um, that's just um, it's a sobering thought. And I'm just so thankful that, you know, even though I'd never lived for God, he still had mercy on me. And that's how much he loves each and every one of us. He's willing to give us second chances. And I'm thankful for that. <clears throat> so when I woke up um, from a three-day coma, I had remembered nothing that had happened. I didn't know how I was in the hospital. I didn't know um, the events that had led up to it. So my mom had to, you know, rehash everything and tell me what had happened. But... Um, my dad came to me and, and while I was in the hospital, and he said, you know, we have to get you help. You can't keep doing this to yourself. And, you know, I had been to other rehabs before when I was um, 17, and nothing, nothing had worked. And the reason why was because um, it wasn't Christ-centered. It wasn't faith-based. And um, the, mission, the missing part of the equation in my life was always God. Um, you know, I never had him, but when I did, um, life was completely different, and, um, you know, by the grace of God, I've been sober for four years, going on four years, and I just praise the Lord for that, because it's nothing that I've done, but it's everything that he's done, and, um, you know, since then, um, you know, he told me I, I had to get help, so um, he told me about Reformers Unanimous, and it's the RE program that we have here on Friday night. This was actually the first one that I came to before I went into the residential program in Rockford, Illinois. And um, I'm just so thankful for the people who reached out to me in the darkest moments of my life. And I'm thankful that um, the Lord used them as a tool and as an instrument to draw me to himself. And um, so I agreed to go to 
the home in Rockford, Illinois, and upon the first day, I got saved, and um, I got my first Bible and started to read it, and through the Word of God, um, my life was completely changed, and you know, I'm not that same person I used to be, and it's only because of the grace of God. There's a verse in Philippians, it's um, Philippians 3, 13, and 14. It says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And that's how I choose to live my life now. Um, you know, sometimes we have to forget those things in our past to move forward. You know, we can't always hold on to our sin and live for God. It doesn't work that way. Um, friendship with the world is, in, is an in, enemy of God. Um, anybody who's a friend of the world is an enemy of God. And um, as much as he loves us, as much as he cares about us, um, he wants us to be friends with him. That's why Jesus Christ came, to reconcile us to God. And I'm just so thankful for that. So after I went into the home, um, the Lord started working in my life. And um, I started praying about what he wanted me to do after I graduated. And I knew I couldn't come back home to Liberty and stay here because there's nothing for me. Um, you know, I didn't want to be around those same people anymore. I needed to separate myself from um, the types of people who I knew would pull me down. So I prayed about it, and um, he led me to attend West Coast Baptist College in California. And um, I don't know... Um, what you, your guys' plans are for after you finish high school, but I would definitely encourage you, please consider um, going to a Bible college. And it doesn't have to be West Coast. It could be any one. Um, there's Pensacola. There's all kinds of amazing Christian colleges out there that are going to um, teach you things from the Word of God and that are going to open your eyes to, um, to things that the Lord wants you to do with your life in the future. And so after attending West Coast, um, that's how the Lord has called me to be. Um, a missions major, and <clears throat> I don't know what his plans for me are in the future. Um, I live every day, um, day by day, you know, and I pray about what the Lord wants me to do, but as long as you stay in the will of God, he's going to show you what he wants you to do in the future, and um, I just want to encourage you guys, um, you know, there's nothing more exciting than living for God, and I never realized that, um, you know, when I was in my addiction. I was blinded. The devil had blinded me that, but um, now that I've been saved for four years, and now that I know um, what the Christian life is about, I would never go back to doing those things that I was before. Um, there's just so much joy and fulfillment in being a Christian and um, living for the Lord. So, um, you know, since then, the Lord has done so many amazing things through my life to reach my family. Um, I've seen my sister get saved. She actually battled with an addiction as well, and she went to the women's home, and um, now she lives for the Lord, and she's coming with me to West Coast, so I'm just so thankful for what he's done in my life. Um, before going to the women's home, I had um, a lot of drug charges against me. Um, going through the courts, I was looking at a felony, um, and up to two years in prison, and um, after graduating the home, I got to go before that same judge who had sentenced me. Um, and I got to share my testimony with him, and he dropped all the charges. He dropped um, a $12,000 fee <clears throat> or a fine that I had, and um, my record is completely clean now, and that's only by the grace of God. Um, they had said uh, this judge has never dropped any kind of felony. Like, it just it doesn't happen with him. But I'm so thankful that the Lord worked in his heart. And um, since then, I've been able to go and share my testimony um, in jails with women. Um, I've seen people get saved, and I'm just uh, I'm so thankful for the grace that God has on each and every one of us. And um, I just want to encourage you, if you don't know for sure that you're going to heaven when you die, um, I know this is a Christian school, but I would be dumb to assume that everybody in here is saved. So if you're not, please, I encourage you, um, talk to Brother Lamb, talk to one of the teachers here, and I know that they would love to share um, the gospel with you and let you know how to know for sure you're going to heaven when you die because that is the biggest thing that we can know. Um, the Lord has given us this life to prepare for the one to come. So while you're here, while you have time, like I said, you never know when your last day is. Um, get that settled. Um, get that nailed down and you can know for sure. So I just want to thank you guys for listening um, and I hope you guys enjoy your school.